Hey guys, um, I know somebody actually I just asked about trying to figure out how to do polar coordinate transformations for limits and to how to kind of evaluate that. So I'm going to talk about that really, really quickly with this kind of example here. So we have, I want to try to find the limit as xy goes to 0, 0 of 2 times sine of x squared plus y squared plus y to the third divided by 3x squared plus 3y squared. Now, as a reminder of what we're trying to do here, Again, the ideas of limits is we're going in different directions and trying to show that all the different directions go towards the origin, right? Go, go and approach the same exact function value. Now, in order to do this, one way to think about this, well, this is a very complicated function, but we can note something very, very interesting. We see this x squared plus y squared, and this gives us a hint as to what we want to, what we want to do. So what we want to say is, if I see this x squared plus y squared, I know in polar, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? And I know that x, you know, is equal to r cosine of theta, and y is equal to r sine of theta. Now, what you can do is, in this case, I know that x, x y goes to 0, 0. So that means I need to be approaching a 0 radius, right? 0 radius means I'm going towards the origin. Right. The radius here means um, how far away from the origin am I? So I can kind of replace this x, y going from 0, 0 to be r from the positive axis, right? r um, from going, from going to 0 from the positive direction, right? Because radii can't be negative. So because of that, what I'm going to do instead is change this limit. Again, my goal always for multivariable limits is to change this into a one-dimensional limit because I know all my properties for one-dimensional limits once I have that. So here, when I then change this to, this becomes then limit as r approaches zero from the right, but I have to be careful. This has to be true for all theta. So no matter what direction I come in, regardless of what direction I come in, it has to be the same. So this has to hold, this thing has to hold for all theta. If it doesn't, the limit does not exist. That's an important fact. So what I do now, every single place I see x squared plus y squared, I'm gonna place with r squared. This y to the third, I'm gonna to have to just leave as r um, to the third times sine of third, which is okay. So two sine of r squared plus r to the third sine of the third of theta, right, just replacing that. Divided by, if you can see here, I could factor out a three, and I can just get three times r squared. Something like this. Okay. Now, if I go about doing this, there's two parts to this now that I kind of have to worry about. There's this right-hand side and this left-hand side. I can split this up into two parts, as r goes to zero of, you know, I can pull out the two thirds of sine of r squared over r squared plus the limit as r goes to zero of r to the third over three r squared times sine of the third of theta. Okay, so now I have these two things right here. If you notice here, because I can cancel out the r's on both the top, this becomes just an r here. And if you'd agree, then it if I just go from r to zero here, this entire thing, because sine of theta has to be a constant, right? It's just a constant. It has to be true for all theta. If you'd agree, as r goes to zero, this entire limit here goes to zero. Cool. Now, over here, there's a couple different ways we can go about trying to solve for this one. Um, usually, the trick for many of these polar coordinate ones is going to be trying to solve this via a L'Hopital's rule, which is a pretty similar thing. So in order to do that, I'm going to erase a little bit more here. I'm actually going to erase this part. <laughs> I have this two-thirds out there, beware. Wolpe Tall's rule says that I can take the derivative of the top and the bottom and then compute the limit of that, f, f prime of x over g prime of x, for instance. So this becomes then two-thirds the limit as r, again, approaches from the right, of the derivative of sine r squared is going to be cosine r squared times the derivative of r, sky, r squared, which is 2r. Cosine. <laughs> cosine of r squared divided by the derivative of, of r squared, which is just 2r. If you notice here, these cancel. And I'm left with the limit as r goes to 0 of cosine of r squared. I can then plug in r equal to 0 here. 
If I plug in r equal to zero there, that becomes cosine of zero. And cosine of zero is one. And so therefore, I'm just left with two thirds. And that's the limiting value here. So again, the goal of these kinds of problems, especially if you're going to try to find a polar coordinate question, two things you want to try to figure out. Firstly, if there are x squared plus y squared, things can simplify. Right? My goal is to convert this to just a one-dimensional limit. If I can just do this to a one-dimensional limit, it becomes a lot easier. I can take and calc one, I calc one pro problems and, and, and techniques and use them. From there, most of the time, I know this sounds weird, but most of the time these problems come from Wolpe Tal's rule, uh, making sure that you take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. And yeah, making sure things cancel, because things will cancel eventually. Um, and again, this has to hold for all theta, basically in all different directions going to my origin, I need that to happen. If it doesn't, then this limit doesn't exist. If I showed that this limit was dependent, for instance, on theta, that means depending on which direction I come in, I'm going to be going to a different function height. And so that's kind of the goal here. So um, if you have any other questions, let me know. And yeah, have a good one.